everybody. I am, uh, I'm so thankful that, uh, you know, Dave, our worship pastor, is off in the woods camping today. And uh, thank you, uh, Trevor, Janelle, for <laughs> jumping in. Thank, thankful that we don't miss a beat. That's fantastic. Uh, we are wrapping up our Hebrew series this morning with something called a benediction. For those of you who aren't maybe familiar, familiar with that word benediction, a benediction is essentially at the end of a, maybe a sermon or at the end of a, a letter. It's a prayer of blessing. And so as we are concluding our Hebrew series, we're concluding it with the benediction that is found uh, in the book of Hebrews. And so turn with me, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 13. It's towards the end of the New Testament, Hebrews, James, then you have a few Johns, and then Revelation, Hebrews chapter 13, almost towards the very, very end of the letter. Just going to read a couple of verses and then uh, talk through it a little bit. But Hebrews chapter 13, the benediction, starting in verse 20, says this. Now, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus... The great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That is the benediction. Let me ask you a question this morning. How many of you ever heard uh, the saying before that hurt people Hurt people. Anybody ever hear that? Hurt people. Not many of you. That's surprising. Well, I'm glad you all know it now. Hurt people hurt people. And, and essentially, the idea behind that saying is that uh, people in life, uh, something happens to them. There's something that is uh, negative in terms of impact, and therefore we get hurt. And oftentimes, uh, that the same thing that we were hurt by then. Uh, leads to us hurting people, sometimes through something different, sometimes through the same exact thing. Some of you maybe can relate to me. There are things that have happened to me, and I would prefer that they wouldn't have happened to me. They were hurtful to me, and I find myself now later in life doing those same exact things, and I think, oh, man, I, I didn't like it when it happened to me. Now I'm doing it to others. The reason for that is because hurt people hurt people. Sometimes, as I said, that, that translates into a different kind of hurt, but the, the truth is that those who have been hurt or wounded in life tend to inflict either that same pain or a related pain onto other people. Let me tell you why uh, the, the unfortunate reality of what this means. All of us in this room, and when I say all of us, I mean all of us, yes, every single one of you, all of us in this room have been hurt. I'm not going to dig into uh, you know publicly maybe some of the hurt, but uh, we could we could uh, analyze or examine or discuss. You could talk about your life in every single person in this room. I'm trying to look at everybody in the eyes, so you know this means all of us. I'm going quickly. All of us at some point in our lives have been hurt. Somebody has wounded us. We've experienced pain because of somebody else. All of us are. Hurt. We have been hurt. So if it's true that hurt people hurt people, and it is, and it's also true that all of us have been hurt, what that means is that all of us are hurt people, and we also are hurt people who hurt people. All of us have been hurt, and because we are hurt people, all of us in some way, in some form, in some fashion, are hurting people. That's the bad news. Everybody feeling good? Yay! Let me tell you the good news. Let me tell you, the, 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 here's the good news. The good news is this. Jesus, Jesus is really good at healing hurt people. That's the good news. In fact, Jesus is so good at healing hurt people that hurt people get healed and instead of being hurt people who hurt people, through the work of Christ, we become healed people who heal people. That's the beauty of the work of Jesus. And so today, as we wrap up our Hebrew series, all throughout this series, we've been looking at ways 
that Jesus is better. And today, as we wrap up the series, we're going to find that Jesus is a better healer. We're going to discover how and why Jesus is a better healer. And before we do that, I'm going to ask that you would pray with me. And uh, as we do, God, I'm going to ask uniquely this morning that because of the nature of this topic, because of the nature of the discussion, this is a, it's a complex one. It's one that has significant impact on our lives. And as we talk about being hurt people, certainly there is there's a flood of, of emotions and memories associated with having been hurt and even with uh, being someone who hurts. And so uniquely as we begin to uh, delve into this, we would ask that your spirit, through, through the time that we have to talk and through the time that we have to examine your word, that you would do something transformative in us this morning. I pray that as, at the conclusion of our time this morning that we could honestly say that there was a, a spiritual work that happened in us and that as we leave here, something substantive would have taken place to where we were less hurt and more healed. And so we pause in this moment to invite you to do that supernatural spiritual work and maybe maybe one that, that is needed to take place for years in our lives. And so we pause, we yield ourselves to, to the work of your spirit in our lives, and we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. As, as we continue on, I want to talk for just a moment about if it's true that hurt people hurt people. Some of you may be not convinced of having been a hurt person. But maybe to help you understand some of the nuances of having been a hurt person, I want to talk about symptoms of being a hurt person. Now, you may see these symptoms in other people. Oftentimes, it's easier to see things in other people than it is in ourselves. But my encouragement to you as we talk about these symptoms is that you wouldn't instantly assume uh, or think about how these are illustrated in the lives of other people. But perhaps that you would examine to see whether or not they're true in yourself. Let's talk a little bit about some of the symptoms. I've, I spoke with, a, we have a counselor that's uh, working out of our office here at the church. She's a great lady, very effective at what she does. Uh, she's uh, got lots of education, a doctor, and, and understands this well. So I said, hey, can you sit down with me this week and help me to understand a little bit uh, more about what it's like to, to be hurt? And, uh, of course, she, it turned into a counseling session for me. But uh, anyways... <laughs> Uh, one of the things that she said that really struck with me, uh, or stuck with me, was this, and I wrote it down because it was so profound. She says, what, I, what I've seen in my experience is that too many people, instead of trying to heal their hurt, they try their best not to feel their hurt. And so as she's talked with people, and as she's counseled with people, in her experience, what she has seen mostly is that people, instead of trying to process and deal with their hurt, that they just try to not feel it. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I don't like feeling hurt. I'm guessing none of you do either. Anybody love, hey, no, okay, good. So no masochist in the room. We don't like feeling hurt, and sometimes in order to deal with the hurt, we have to feel the hurt. In order to... Uh, in order to process and to understand and really deal well with the hurt, we have to feel it. But feeling it doesn't feel good. And so instead of dealing with it, we just go, I don't want to feel it. And so unfortunately, the hurt never gets resolved. We, we continue to see the impact of the hurt in our lives. And so here's just a few various ways that we might see uh, the hurt being demonstrated uh, addiction is one common thing that we'll see in terms of hurt, and addiction plays itself out uh, in so many different ways. It could be addiction, uh, sexual addiction. It could be an addiction to pornography. It could be a food addiction. It could be a, a shopping addiction. Anybody ever sit at their computer and 
you're browsing online and you're checking out Amazon and there's this feeling of discontent when you think if I just place my order now then I'm going to feel better and you place the order and you're like, oh, that didn't do what I thought it would do. <laughs> she said, one of the things that I'm seeing most often now is an addiction to screen time. And I said, tell me, help, help me to understand that a little bit. She said, there's one of the ways that I see so many people avoiding their hurt or not feeling hurt is just by having something in front of them that can occupy their, their attention. And the more she talked about it, the more I started to realize, yes, that's true. And so, it, so many people are hurt, and in, instead of dealing with the hurt, you put your face in front of a screen, and you scroll, and you look at other things, and it becomes a constant perpetual distraction so I don't have to think or feel anything. So it gets played out a lot in terms of addiction. Another thing that people often do Another symptom of being a hurt person is isolation. Many people who have been hurt, their solution is, I'm just going to isolate myself. I'm going to remove myself from relationships because it's the relationship that caused the hurt in the first place. And so if I can just isolate myself, build a bunch of walls, then nobody can hurt me. The downside to that, the downside of, of isolation and the downside of, of withdrawal is those walls that we build to protect ourselves, ultimately then turn into a prison. And we think, it's, we think it's for protection, but it actually holds us into this container that ends up causing more hurt than we hoped that it would do. So sometimes symptoms of hurt could be addiction. Sometimes they can be isolation or being withdrawn. Sometimes people uh, become hypersensitive. You may see this in yourself or... Uh, you, I'm sure you've seen it in other people, but again, I hope we apply it to ourselves. When uh, one sign or symptom of hurt is when somebody says a word to you, the, word, the words themselves are neutral. They are neither positive nor negative. They are simply neutral, but those words, because of hurt, get misinterpreted to mean something negative. I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation and somebody says, well, that's not what I meant. Chances are good when somebody says, well, that's not what I meant. It's because those neutral words, because of your hurt, got misinterpreted and translated into something that was negative. There's a hypersensitivity that we have. Sometimes there's an overreaction. A, a very common symptom of being a hurt person is overreacting to things. Anybody have road rage? And that person not turning their blinker on, not signaling before they turn, all of a sudden is, my wife tells me, she, she says all the time, she says, do you really think your horn, your horn is going to change somebody's driving behavior? And I'm like, it hasn't yet, but I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Laying on my horn, somebody's going to understand the error of their ways, and they're going to forever be different. O overreactions are often a symptom of, we call them, it's, it's, fascinating in society today because if you haven't figured it out we live in a world filled with hurt i don't know anybody following any local politics what is that it's a symptom of hurt how about national global politics do you, do you know that there's not a lot of calm civil discussion anymore anybody anybody picked up on that it's a symptom of hurt. We have this word now. I was reading an article, and I'm sure you've heard of it. I was reading an article uh, in the news, but the first line of the article said trigger warning. And it was just warning me that some, there was some kind of content in this article that was going to trigger something in somebody, and so it was be careful. What is that? The only reason we have trigger warnings is because there's unresolved hurt. There's hurt that hasn't been dealt with. And so the symptom is, I'm going to get triggered. That's why we have safe spaces on university campuses. Because if I venture out of this safe space, I might experience hurt again. And so instead of dealing with the hurt, we create these spaces that are safe. But it doesn't really, doesn't really solve the problem. All kinds of hurt. Those, those are all symptoms. Now, here, here's what's really, really important to understand. I'm not a doctor, though I'm really good at Googling. Uh, but here's what I know about, here's what I know about healthcare. Whenever, whenever somebody has a physical problem, 
there is a massive difference between a symptom and the thing causing the symptom. There is a huge difference between a disease and how that disease presents itself. If you want to be a really lousy physician, here's what I know you can do. Treat the symptom, but ignore the thing that's causing the symptoms. If you want to be a really ineffective physician, then only deal with the way that the disease presents itself and completely ignore the disease itself. What does that have to do with anything? Well, we just got done talking about symptoms of hurt. And we could go on, I could, I could open it up and we could have dialogue and we could probably talk for hours about symptoms. But all of these things that we talked about, things like anger or being withdrawn or being uh, hypersensitive or uh, over, overreaction, all of these things, we could go on and on. They're all symptoms. We can treat symptoms, and a lot of times we do. But it's not going to solve the problem. Because really what's important, and by the way, this is why Jesus is a better healer. The reason that Jesus is a better healer is because there are all kinds of methodologies to try to help people deal with hurt. Various religious systems all have some sort of means of trying to deal with hurt. All of them ineffective. The Bible, and part of the reason that we, we hold it in high regard, and part of the reason that we believe that there's something unique to it from all other books, it says that if you want to try to figure out the core issue, if you want to try to get to the root of the anger, if you want to try to get to the root of the withdrawnness, if you want to try to get to the root of the hypersensitivity, if you want to get to the root of the uh, overreactionary and all the other things, go all the way to the core, go all the way to the, the disease, and you will find something called sin. That's, that's the core. And if you do not, remember, hurt people are hurt people. We've all been hurt. We understand that to be true. But here's the problem. Because we're all hurt people, if we only deal with the external symptoms and we never address the core issue, the symptoms are always going to continue. Now, what does that have to do with the benediction of Hebrews chapter 13? Let me tell you what it has to do with the benediction in Hebrews chapter 13. The whole picture, the author of Hebrews, again, he's writing to people who used to be Jewish. They're now Christians. They're experiencing some adversity because they're followers of Christ. And so the author of Hebrews is trying to encourage them to remember the value of the work of Christ in their lives. He's trying to help them to rem remember to cling to the truth of what Jesus has done and all the ways that Jesus is better. And so in this passage, in this benediction, there's this idea of the God being a God of peace and Jesus who is a good shepherd. And there's wording of this eternal covenant, all with the, go the goal, all with the hope that the author of Hebrews is going to say, hey, Jesus has done a work for you. Jesus has done something that if you apply it, if you receive it, will do something transformative in your life. If you embrace it, the eternal covenant, the, the, the actions of the, the good shepherd, his blood that was shed, it will do something for you. What will it do? Let me go back to verse 21. It will, this work of Jesus will equip you with everything good that you may do his will. Now when I read that, nobody said, amazing! Let me help you understand why that's amazing. That word equip is a great, great word. It's a good one. It, 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 it means various things, but the essence of what it means, that word equip is when something is broken and it gets fixed. That word equip is when something is incomplete 
and somebody sees it's incomplete. It's not quite done. And so somebody comes in and they do some work on it and they, they mess with it a little bit. And the thing that was incomplete then becomes complete. Or for the sake of what we're talking about this, this morning, something is hurt. Somebody comes in and does a work on that thing. And when it gets equipped, the thing that is hurt becomes healed. It becomes well. It becomes useful. And so what the author of Hebrews is trying to help us to understand is the work of Jesus is all about taking people who are broken and fixing them. It's all about taking people, human beings who are incomplete, and completing them. The work of Jesus is all about taking people who are hurt and healing them. How does the work of Jesus do that? The work of Jesus does that by addressing the very core issue of what makes us broken. Nothing else in the world solves the problem of sin. Therefore, everything else in the world is a less than perfect healer. Anybody ever hear of anger management courses? Okay, anybody take those? Don't, don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. <laughs> What's an, think about the phrase. Okay, so you have some anger problems, you're going to go to a class, and you're not going to solve the problem of your anger, you're going to figure out how to manage your anger. All that, all that does is you're dealing with the symptoms. Some of you have had anger issues, and you no longer have anger issues. Do you know why? It's because Jesus addressed the root issue of your anger Solve the problem of your sin. And so the work of Jesus always works from the inside out. Everything else is always behavior management, and it never works. If you take anger management, guess what? You're going to be managing your anger the rest of your life. What you need is a solution to the core issue, the disease. The the root problem needs to be resolved. Only Only Jesus can do that. That's why Jesus is the better healer we have all these things that we do to try to solve the problem anybody anybody a venter that's how you deal with your uh your hurt i just got a vent anybody like to say that i just got a vent here's what i know about venters (laughs) venters seem to have a perpetual venting issue I just got a vent, and then something happens to them the next day. I just got a vent. But yeah, but Jesus vented yesterday. Yeah, I know. And then the next day is, guess what they got to do? You got a vent. The reason that venters are perpetual vent- venters is because nothing has been done to solve the very core issue of what's causing the hurt in the first place. And if you can allow Jesus to come in and heal the hurt, the very core from the inside out, then the need to vent goes away or at least is greatly diminished. We have these things called coping mechanisms. Another great phrase. I have a mechanism that's gonna help me to cope. I've been hurt. The problem with a lot of the coping mechanisms is that the coping mechanism end up causing more hurt to other people. Now it might work for you, but everybody else, it doesn't work for. So if you're in a meeting, if you're in a business meeting at work and somebody's saying something and it's mean and your coping mechanism is I got to get up and walk out and so things get heated and you're like, I got to go and you walk out, guess how everybody else feels? Hurt. Well, it worked for you but didn't work for everybody else. My coping mechanism is I just got to speak my mind. And so you you kind of all over somebody, you feel better but how does everybody else feel? I'm glad you feel good, but now everybody else is hurt. And so the the cycle, here's the unfortunate cycle of of the world that we live in. A hurt person, hurt people hurt people, right? So I'm hurt, and so because of my hurt, I hurt somebody. Frankly, it's usually a few people. And so I hurt a few people, and and they're hurt now, and what do those few people do? They hurt more people. And so now we have a bunch of hurt people, and hurt people hurt people, and so all of those hurt people hurt people, and all of those hurt people hurt people, until we get to where we're at today. A heck of a lot of hurt people hurting people. 
But, like we said, Jesus, when those, when those symptoms present themselves, the work of Jesus somehow intervenes in all of that. And the work of, of Jesus does this beautiful thing where, where it can stop or put an end to that cycle of hurt. And if we, if we allow Jesus to do a work, what, sometimes what happens, and it's a beautiful picture and it's so hard to do, we receive hurt. By the way, that's what Jesus did, right? Jesus' life, his suffering, and his suffering for sin was all about him receiving hurt that he didn't deserve, him taking it on himself and dealing with it. And so what that allows us to do is we can shift, and when we are hurt, and we will be hurt, we can, instead of allowing that hurt to translate into hurt, we can go, okay, Jesus, I'm going to take that hurt, and I'm going to give it to you because I know that you died for that hurt. And I can say, let that hurt stop with me. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy, heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. What he's basically saying is, when, when you're hurt, don't transfer that hurt to other people. Transfer that hurt over to me. Let me take it. And we can stop the cycle of hurt. We can transfer it over to him, knowing that he welcomes it, knowing that he wants it. The other thing that we can do when we're hurt is we can pause in that moment and say, okay, I recognize some of the symptoms here. I, I see some of the signs that I'm a hurt person. By the way, did, are, you, are you relating to some of those signs in your own life? Are you starting to, did, can everybody identify them or am I, am I the only one? Okay. Can, can you kind of dig around a little bit and see some of those symptoms of hurt? Okay, good. If you're not sure, have a conversation with me. I'll tell you about them in your life, okay? Yeah. So when we do see those symptoms presenting themselves, we can pause in that moment. Here's, here's a little prayer, a very simple prayer. We'll put it on the screen. You might write it down or uh, remember it and just try to apply it. When we see these symptoms of hurt present themselves, we can say in that moment, Jesus, Jesus, I acknowledge this area of hurt in my life. And I ask that you would heal it and make me a healer. When these symptoms are presenting themselves, instead of allowing that hurt to kind of fester and to define me and become part of who I am as a person, I can say, okay, Jesus, I see, I can see maybe how I'm uh, continuing hurt. I'm a hurt person and I'm now hurting people. And when we see those things present itself, we can stop and say, Jesus, I'm just going to acknowledge that this is a, this is a reflection, this is a demonstration of hurt in my life. And I understand that you're, you're a healer and you heal people from the inside out. And so instead of me just trying to manage the symptoms, I'm going to pause in this moment and ask that you would go to the very core, to the very essence of, of who I am as a person and heal me so that I would now then become a healer. I want you to think about the potential a little bit of this. A group of people. I think it's fair to say that the normative behavior of the world that we live in is hurt people continuing to hurt people. But what if, what if we be really truly believed in the work of Christ as followers of Christ? What if we truly believed that the work of Jesus can heal the very depths of who we are as a person? What if we truly believe as followers of Christ that he can transform us and redeem and equip us and complete us and take people who are broken and fix us? I want you to imagine the implications of what that would be like. What if we as a group of people, a few hundred of us, in, in our town, at your workplace, in your neighborhood, with your, with your group of friends, whatever area you function in, what if, what if you were the person that was known as the healer? 
What if you were the person at work when you entered into a room and there was a little bit of conflict or a little bit of strife? Instead of being a hurt person who just hurt people, what if because what if your boss was thankful that you were at, at your place of employment because you're just known as a healing person? What if in your family, what if your kids said, you know what, I'm so thankful for my dad or I'm so thankful for my mom because I know their story and they were people who were hurt, but Jesus did a work in their life. And in my home, I feel like my home is a home of healing because of the work that Jesus has done in my mom's life or in my dad's life or in your marriage? What if, our, what if in our community, Payson isn't that big of a community, but what if in our community people were so thankful, people that had nothing to do with Expedition Church, what if they were so thankful that Expedition Church was here because people at Expedition were a bunch of really healed people? And we just went out into our neighborhoods and into our community and into whatever sphere of influence that we have and because of the healing transformative work of christ we were healers isn't that a beautiful picture it's not unrealistic it's possible but the only way that it's possible is if you and i believe that jesus does what he does it's only possible if you and I truly believe that Jesus heals hurt people and makes them healers. And I believe with all my heart that's what he wants for us. I want to close, but as we do, I want to pray for you. And then I want to pray this prayer of blessing, this benediction over you. So I'm going to ask as I pray for you if you would stand with me. And as we do, I'm going to ask that you do a little bit of introspection, a little self-examination along with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Sometimes it's hard when you've been listening to somebody speak to have moments of self-reflection. And so I wanted to do that now and give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to maybe root around a little bit in your, in your heart and in your soul. Maybe you would start by first reflecting on ways in your life that you've been hurt. Maybe for a long time you've tried, your, your, your approach has been instead of trying to heal it, you've been just trying not to feel it. And perhaps you would pause in this moment, be a little bit vulnerable, and allow yourself to to be aware of it and to, to feel it for a moment, knowing that you have to feel it before you can be healed of it. How have you been hurt? Would you give that hurt over to Jesus right now in this moment? Lay it at the foot of the cross give it to him, ask that he would heal you of it. Maybe you would do a little bit of examination now and say, what, what are the symptoms? How are the symptoms of hurt presenting themselves in my life? Maybe pray that as those as those symptoms present themselves, that in those moments you would, you would be more vigilant, more aware to pause in that moment to say, Jesus, the hurt is presenting itself, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that you would heal it. I know that you're so good at healing from the inside out, and I don't want to treat the symptoms anymore. I want to go right to the core of the issue. I need you to heal me as a person. So now let me pray the prayer of blessing, the benediction over you. From the book of Hebrews, would you receive this from verse 20 and 21? May the God of peace, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, 
by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you, complete you, fix you, heal you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless. Have a great day.